from San Francisco, California. This is the Rock and Roll Geek Show. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. <clears throat> Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Monday, December 10th, 2018, and it is 8.27 p.m. when I'm recording this episode. I got off the phone about two hours ago with Lauren Ruth Ward, the woman who is taking... Chrissy Amphlett's place in the Divinals. And uh, I thought this interview wasn't going to happen. I've been trying to make it happen for a long time. And her manager was all fine and um, seemed to be interested in making it happen. But it kept getting postponed. Even went so far as me calling her when at the scheduled time to call and not getting an answer. And then calling it again and not getting an answer. Then finally telling her manager, forget it. And the interview finally happened. So... I talked to to Lauren Ruth Ward for about mm, about a half hour, something like that, 35 minutes, something like that. I think I answered everything that I wanted to know about someone who's taken the place and trying to who, ha, who has such big shoes to fill in Chrissy Amphlett's. I think I asked everything that anybody would want to know. So I hope you enjoy it, friends. If you're a Divinals fan, hope you find this interesting. Lauren Ruth Ward is. There's no question that this that this uh, woman has talent, and I wish her the best. So, without further ado, I'm just going to let this interview play. Thanks for listening, friends. Please keep the donations coming. This show is a value for value model, meaning whatever you think this show is worth. When you listen to the show, if it brings you any value at all. I ask that you donate what that value is, friends. Or, and if you don't have any money, eh, it's okay as well. Thanks for listening, friends. Rockandrollgeek.com is where you find the show. Find me on the Facebook, r r Geek. Find me on the Twitter, r r Geek. Find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. And send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. I hope you enjoy this interview with Lauren Ruth Ward. Hello there. Hi, Lauren. It's Michael Butler. Hi, Michael. I'm so sorry. Thank you for coming on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So, um, first of all, congratulations on the Divinals gig. I'm sure that's. Uh, are you? Were you a Divinals fan before you you did before this happened? Yes. Yeah. So it's extra special. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> You you don't seem like you're very old. You must have been like three years old when the first Divinals record came out. I was, yeah. I was um, I was born in 88, so you are correct. So how um, how did you discover the Divinals? My mom. I have a cool mom. <laughs> so what's the first Divinals song she ever played for you, remember? I Touch Myself. Okay, so that was... That the, was, that was, yeah, and that one was super big in the States, you know? Yeah. And uh, did you pursue, did you uh, go search out any other Divinal songs after that, or did you just like that song? I, and... I did. Um, when I was in high school, um, like my sophomore year when I was 15, I had a really big um, love affair with the 80s uh -huh. and had a huge Madonna fan and Cyndi Lauper and Bow Wow Wow, and Divinal was one of the bands as well, and that's when I... the the songs that um, I became, because every you know everything was out. Um, that was like you know two thousand six or so, two th or two thousand four rather. Um, Boys in Town uh -huh. and Only Lonely and Only You, Sleeping Beauty, Science Fiction. Um, I kind of found all those on my own. Uh, so the only song I knew um, was um, I knew I Touch Myself. And I also knew um, Casual Encounter. And there was another one that was kind of bigger in the States as well. Oh, um, pleasure and Pain? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. There you go. So how did, yeah. you, how did Mark McEntee find you? So Billy Steinberg, he is a songwriter. Uh -huh. And um, in the late 80s, early 90s, he wrote a bunch of hits like True Color and 
Eternal Flame and Like a Virgin. And um, he actually wrote I Touch Myself with his songwriting partner, Tom Kelly. And my um, girlfriend is a good friend of Billy's. And so Billy and I have become buddies. And um, he's seen me at a couple of shows. And the first time he saw me, uh, he was like, you know, you should look up. He's like, you know, he's, he's sweet. He, uh, he gives he gives me credit now, but he just kind of assumes that like youngsters don't know uh, good class good, good classics, and so he's like, you know what the divinals are, and I'm like, yeah, and he was like, you remind me of Chrissy Amphlett in your own way. How did you know, he, how did you remind you. how did you remind him of that? Because you have a raspy voice, a little bit like Chrissy. Or? No, no, no. I'm 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 about to tell you what he told me. He was saying that I reminded him of her. I remind him of her. In, his, in my own way because of my intense energy uh-huh. and kind of, you know, he, he'd used the word like it's, it's, it's vulnerable and ruthless at the same time. And, and I was like, he's like, have you ever looked up um, live videos of her? And I told him that I hadn't since I was like 15, 16, because that was also around that time YouTube wasn't really popping right. until like 2006, like my junior or senior year of high school. I, I just missed that, which is why I don't really feel like a millennial because I feel like I wasn't naturally into like um, um, like video games, you know. So it's just right. I, I, I missed that boat. I had to read books and find out about it the old fashioned way. And um, I hadn't really seen too many videos of her performing live, but I definitely knew that she was a spitfire and de- a demand. And I went back to Billy's request. Um, this was like two, two and a half years ago. And I watched a bunch of live videos. Um, and I wrote it and, you know, he checked in. He's like, did you, did you look her up? And I was like, I did. I was like, immediately after he told me, I looked her up and holy shit, like incredible. You know, she's, she definitely had her, uh, she lived, she lived in her head. She lived, you know, she, she was in her mind on stage and you could tell it was natural. And I resonate with that. I, I just go, I, I get to go to a different place. I just, I don't really think about it's It's a, it's happy for me because I, you know, I feel like, um, that's obviously when you're your happiest is when you're not really caring about what other people think. You get and lost. As much as we all like, you get lost in the moment on stage. You just become, you just become, on, you're on stage and there's nothing else besides you and on on the stage performing. Exactly. So how yeah. did so how did you contact Mark or did, did Billy Steinberg contact Mark and No, so Billy and Mark are buddies from back in the day and Billy phoned me one day and said that he wanted to re record um I Touch Myself and I had sang I Touch Myself with Billy a couple times and a bunch and a couple other songs that he wrote that I named earlier. Um, Billy does a lot of, uh, he goes to schools and he goes to, you know, music schools and he does like songwriting rounds with Rita Wilson. And he does a lot of cool stuff where he gets to sing his songs and he doesn't, um, he doesn't favor singing them. So he likes to bring up, um, a singer and, and, you know, star a guest and share the spotlight. Cause he's also just a cool guy like that. And so, after we had sang that song a couple times, he was like, you should cover it. And we covered it at a show or two. And then he just knows that I really like it. And he is a cool, sweet man. And was like, Mark McKenzie's going to come to um, the States, him and his wife. And I think we should re-record it. Um, you guys should also just like meet and hang. And, and I was just kind of like beside myself. And I was just like, that's like, the craziest thing that I, I didn't, I just, I wouldn't think that like someone like Mark, you know, would be into it. Right. And then I met Mark and he's, have you ever had a conversation with him? Uh, yes. I interviewed him and Chris, as a matter of fact. Well, that's, that's really special. Yeah. Um, Chrissy is, yeah, my, go ahead. No, I want to hear what you have to say. Uh, Chrissy Amphlett is a, well, Mark McEntee was a really nice guy too, and a way underrated guitar player, but Chrissy Amphlett, I don't know if you know, but she is a national treasure in Australia. Did did Mark tell you I, that? Uh, Mark didn't have to tell me that. I already knew it. You already knew how beloved she is in Australia? Yeah. Yeah. She's something else. She is like royalty in Australia. And to me, 
Chrissy Amphlett is, <clears throat> or I know she's no longer with us, but she still is is one of a kind, a truly one of a kind woman. And, and uh, yeah. there will never be anybody like Chrissy Amphlett. She was a total, total, total original. I'm sure you know that. Well, as I think, well. yeah, and I think like all front people. They're all originals. There's never going to be someone that duplicates them. Like every, there's never going to be another David Bowie, never another Chrissy Amphlett, never exactly. another Freddie Mercury. Because all these people, that, that's a part of that's a part of why they were who they were. Is because they were unique, original souls. So was Mark already thinking about re- about redoing the Divinals, or did he just come and just no. meet you? No, no, we know we just had a really good time in the studio that day, and then we ended up getting. Uh, while they were in town, uh, my partner and I hung out with them. Uh, them is uh, Mark and his wife Melanie mm-hmm. a couple times, and um, and and yeah, just through just through general, you know, just bond and and um, love for the Divinals and respect for you know what he was a part of, what he helped create. Um, we had uh, numerous conversations, just you know. Um, that that just were natural and didn't talk about that. And then when I got a, when he reached out to me a couple of months ago, um, and it was also a couple of months after that, um, and, and shared the idea and just was like, would you be interested in this? I, again, you know, just, I couldn't believe it. And I was, was like, um, absolutely. Are you, are you sure? Do you want to <laughs> think about that? Like, you know, and, and what were your, like, yeah. what were your apprehensions? Um, I actually didn't have any apprehensions until this week, um, which are natural ones. You know, th- there's a lot of naysayers that are taking, um, well, I'll, I'll tell you my, my first instinct when he told me was I was honored and excited and, and, you know, there, there's a lot of things. It's a really, it's a, it's an incredible once in a lifetime opportunity for myself as an individual musician. Um, and also so much fun. I mean, we like to cover we have our own thing, but we only have an, we only have one album out right now because yeah. um, we're kind of a baby band. So it's fun when we get headlining tours, you get those hour long sets, hour and a half, hour, 20 minutes. And so we get to, we, co- we have to cover songs. Um, and I love the Divinal songs. I love singing those songs. So I just was immediately excited that I, I get to perform those songs and for people who love them and it, you know, people who lived through them and it was a part of their life. Um, it's that's going to be a really incredible feeling. I feel the energy from my crowd all the time. That's what makes us do this. That's what makes, you know, that's a front person's food is the energy, the people you don't get off to just singing in the mirror. Um, and the only apprehension I had towards it was actually recently just because, um, I am, um, I'm online and I'm, I'm excited and there's, there's a lot of love coming in. People are excited and are really looking forward to it. But, you know, there's a lot of people who are, um, bashing the idea, but what are their, I don't really, what are their, uh, what are they saying about it? I, I can't remember anything specifically. There's, there's, you know, there's, it's, it feels like a lot of feelings and opinions. It's like the way that I see it is if you look at this tour, like, it's going to be the divinals with Chrissy. It's not, it's not, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm not her. Um, this is just, this is, if, if you feel like reliving these songs and there's space, um, you know, to hear them in a different light with a different musician and to see that it is, it's love and it's, it's just, um, it's for the fan. It's it's just to relive the songs. It's not it's not replacing Chrissy. I think that it's an homage to her, and 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 you know, I'm honored to be the so, person that gets to sing the songs. But it, no one's trying to replace Chrissy, and I'm not trying to mimic her. I don't. I'm husky. Yeah, and I have cracks in my voice. I mean, Mark has told me in ways how I remind her of Chris. How, how I remind my voice reminds him of Chrissy's voice. But it's um. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to emulate her. I can't. Our voices aren't identical. Our voices are only slightly similar, and um, I don't run around on stage like she does. I, I do my own thing, and I'm. I'm going to be exactly me, uh, but be singing 
her words and and words that you know she made famous through other songwriters and um and it's 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 that's what it is so the you know, fan, so the naysayers are are they say that um it shouldn't be called the divinals without Chrissy is that what they're saying I didn't read that verbatim but I think um I think the gist that I got from reading a couple of the uh the opposing arguments is um that they don't think that they should do it because Chris Chrissy wouldn't have liked it or uh-huh. but I think that's I think that's something that I wouldn't want to put my two cents into because I I don't know. I never knew Chrissy personally. Right. It doesn't so, con- it doesn't um, concern you. It's more of a thing for Mark to deal with. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Um but I think that you know, it's interesting. Um I can't help but um Have I can't you? help but think about uh my writing partner and I. His name's Eduardo Rivera and that's we the, are Lauren Bruce. That's the guy in your band. That's the guy in your band. That is the only man in my band. Yeah. yeah. Um, Eduardo and I, you know, we are Lauren Ruth Ward band. Right. And, um, what does he think about you doing this with the, with, uh, Mark? Uh, all of my friends think that this is incredible. Is he um, at all, is your band at all afraid that maybe this will be successful and you'll become the new singer for Divinals and, uh, you'll leave the band behind? <laughs> no, that's never a possibility. I'm not the new singer of the Divinal. You're not. You're this just... is four weeks. Yeah, this is a four week tour. What, so what this is if for the lo- what if uh, this tour went? But that's re- not my intention. What that's if not the, my intention? Right. What if the tour that went really well uh, and Mark wanted you to keep doing it? Would you do it? That would have to be right. Right now, I right. It would just that would have to be. Um, you haven't, I, give, you haven't given gonna... it any thought. It's not, not something you yeah, yeah. Right now. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't cross that, that br- right now. Cross that bridge when you get to it. Exactly. There you go. So have you um, thought... But, have, have you thought well, go ahead. I'm sorry. And it's okay. I was just going to um, finish this thought about, you know, w- along the lines of what you were kind of prompting, uh, the negative comments. You were saying that it's not the divine, it's about Christy. Well, of, you know, of course, but... You know, I, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm present day with my guitarist right now, and he writes all the guitar, and I write the lyrics, and they are my stories, um, and our writing process. And to to put a long story short, um, you know, his guitar, he's there with me while I'm while I'm smoothing out these thoughts, and he plays a part in in bringing my stories out of me, but they are my words. You know, I write all of my own music, right. and he. Um, and that's how I'm able to deliver it with such angst or genuinity and or vulnerability. Yeah, et cetera, he, he does. On the, he writes the guitar parts, and you write and you come and you write the melodies and the words. I, I write the melodies and the lyrics. Right, yeah. But it wouldn't. I, you know, I, I can't help but think like you know, fifty years down the, or you know, thirty years down the road, if, um, if I was in, if if Eduardo was in this position. Um, you know, me as an individual, as a person, you know, me as an individual, I would think that this is really sweet. Um, but, you know, it, it, it has nothing to do with my scenario. And, you know, again, like I never knew Mark or Christy, Christy back in the day, you know, personally, I don't know. Um, I don't know who Christy is. I don't know how she'd feel. Um, but like you were saying, it's, it's not, a, it's, it's not really for me to answer, me to involve myself. I'm, I'm just there to the people who are, who are ready to listen and, and they're for the people who want to hear it um, and the people who don't um, and don't mean to offend anybody. And I think that goes without saying. Yeah, I would imagine that the fans, that the hardcore fans who, who miss Chrissy and think it shouldn't be Divinals without Chrissy, I would imagine they probably wish you the best still. They, they're probably, yeah, they I, would probably take their anger out more on Mark mm-hmm. if, if they took their anger out on anybody. I don't think they would take it <laughs> What kind of dog do you have? He's a Brussels Griffon. Oh, sweet dog. He's um, George Lucas based the Ewoks after their breed. Oh, so right. he's, a, he's, he's a total Chinese dragon Muppet <laughs> looking <laughs> beast. He's fucking adorable. Yeah, they're sweet dogs. He's my babe. So have you th- given any thought about that first gig? 
I'm, I'm going to imagine you have given it a lot of thought about that first gig when you come out on stage. With the I dogs. have. I've given it a lot of thought, and I am. Um, What's the first thing the you're going to... Go ahead. No, you go for it. What is the question. When you come out on stage, what is the first thing you're going to say? I know you've thought about this. Because I would have um, thought, thought about it. If, it. if I was on stage, if I was... I'm a bass player, and if I and like would be my dream to play with whoever, and I would dream, right. I would, I already have in my mind what I would, you know, how I wow. would be, how I would handle when I come out on stage. So I, I would imagine that you do too. You know, I wish I, I wish I had something for this moment, <laughs> but I'm very in the moment. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm in and the moment, a, kind of. That is a great answer. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. So uh, the only thing I could think of, I mean, I, I thought about the first, I thought about the shows in general. I thought about, but you know, I'm, I'm fun. You know, I'm just thinking about like, um, God, I can't blast. wait to sing these songs. Yeah. The, uh, you know, what, what songs I can't wait to sing more this week versus last week versus the week before when I was, you know, just going through the repertoire, just general prepping. Um, and also, uh, how, you know, Chrissy style is just so badass. Um, I love the, I love the juxtaposition with, you know, she's in a schoolgirl dress, but, you know, gyrating like a maniac. Um, I, you know, I'm just having fun with those. I'm having fun with that, with the, what's the first show? What am I going to wear? How am I going to, you know, but as far as what I would say, um, cause it's, it's, it's going to be fun for me. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to be a blast. I'm not, it's going to be it's going to be a, an absolute blast. And it's going will, to be these will the probably, coolest four weeks of my entire life to date. These will probably be the biggest gigs you've ever done, I would imagine, right? I mean, I don't, um, you know, I don't I know the size of these the, venues that you're playing, so I, I, you know, I'm not... I was just... Yeah, I was just going to say that. Um, I haven't... Um, I, I plan on doing that after the holidays. I actually... I do the... I tour manage my own tours, right. and I like to... Um, I always kind of get, you know get nerdy and look at the venues and the, the capacity sizes and when the buildings are built. And I like to, to go down Wikipedia, a Wikipedia K hole is right. what I call it. Yeah. And, um, so I plan on doing that, um, in a bit, but we played for like, we played for, um, thousands a couple of times, but no, it's definitely not what I'm used to. Um, I played for like, 2,000 to 4,000 a good bit, and then anything bigger than that, I've only played a couple times right. at festivals. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be fun. If I, if I were to think about words to say, I think the only thing I would say would be thank you. It's just like, that could be the first thing, because <laughs> that's going to be something that doesn't change in the moment. Yeah. Have, um, have you guys started working on a, a set list? Um, I have the... I, I know the... Um, Right now we've got 19 songs um, that were handpicked with care. Handpicked by who? By who? Who are they handpicked uh, by? But by Mark. By Mark. And I, 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 I mean, I, I'm happy with any of them. I'm a fan. Can so you, can you tell me I'm those stoked. songs? Um, you can guess a couple, and I can say yes or no. Are you playing? I'm jealous. Yes. You know those. Oh vocals. yeah. That song, Chrissy sings that. That's one of the best vocals ever of any song in the history of songs. I'm jealous. No. So you're doing the I'm agree with you. so you're doing I'm jealous. If you have you guys started rehearsing it? You have not, right? I have rehearsed on my own and then we actually have a couple weeks to rehearse in um over in Australia, right before the tour. Oh, you get to go you get to go two weeks before the tour starts, Australia. Yeah. Is, are you bringing your girlfriend yeah. too? No, she's on tour. She's He's, to, if you could believe it, she's like a little bit busier than I am. What band is she in? Her name is LP. Mm, ELP. And she is her. Nope. Uh, I'm letter sorry. L, letter P. Okay, I don't know that. I don't know that music, so I'm, I'm more of a hard rock. Oh, I'm guy. so jealous of you. <laughs> you get to listen to her for your first time. Okay, I'll look her she's, up. She's um, yeah, she's otherworldly. Okay, so you get so you get to spend six weeks in Australia. That's going to be nice. Yeah, All right, it's, so, it's about five and a half. It's going to be. Are you playing? I'm excited. Are you playing Elsie? Say that again. Are you playing the song called Elsie? No, we are not. That, that one's not on there. Okay. What about? I would imagine you're playing Boys in Town. 
Uh, oh hell yeah! And you're playing Pleasure and Pain. Uh, you're playing. Mm-hmm. You're playing the hits. You're playing Back to the Wall. Yep. Uh, you're playing Only Lonely. Yep. Science fiction, obviously. Yep. Ring me up. No. A cover. I'll make you happy. Maybe. Okay, that was a minor hit for them. Make out all right. Anything yeah. else? Anything else? For, okay, so you're playing more off. See, you know, them. you you could have just written the set list. You got it. Uh, are you playing if love was a gun? Maybe. Look for video. I don't know if there's video of Chrissy doing love if love was a gun, but I saw them in in San Francisco where I live at the at a place. What called year? The, I can look it up. At a place called the Warfield. It was when that album came out, ninety one, I think. Cool. Oh my God, her performance on If Love Was a Gun was oh. unbelievable. It was absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, okay, so you do, uh, are you doing I'm On Your Side from that album? That's a ballad. Possibly. Yeah, great, possibly. Oh, great tune. We've got some maybes, yeah. We'll have to see how the energy goes in the room. You know how that goes. You're a performer. Uh, Sleeping Beauty, probably. Yeah. Casual, mm-hmm. casual Encounter. Of course. Uh, temperamental? Yes. Oh, good set list. Mark is Mark, yeah, Mark wrote out be. a good set list. Uh, mm, probably nothing. Human on the inside. Maybe. You know that tune. Yes. Isn't that a great tune? <laughs> it's a great tune. You, you have you studied the tunes. emotion in, in Chrissy's voice and how she's really just? You can tell that she's singing from the balls. I mean, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not a dummy. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to set myself up for failure. The reason why I said yes to this is because I am my own. It's a great opportunity. I am my own. Yeah, it's a great opportunity, but that's not. Well, you won't but fail. You will not fail. Great opportunity or not, I mean, you know, when, I, I like how you say, you know, Chrissy sings from the balls. Um, you know, that's what I do. So, you know, and she does it in her way and I do it in my way. And yes. That there's, is, there's singers that don't do that and there's singers that do that. It is good, and, that, it is good that you're going to try to do it in your own way and not try to be like Chrissy. Well, it's, I'm, thank you, but I, I, if I can you know, pick that sentence apart. I'm not trying to do it in my own way. I'm just going to do it. And it happens to be my way because it's coming out of me. Are you doing Don't You Go Walking? No. Okay. That's on What a Life. You know. uh, actually, that one is a maybe. That's a good one. Yeah. It's They're all great ones. I mean, if we had, you know, <laughs> and five doing, hours, uh, then I'd say yes to all of these. Uh, casual Encounter, did I already say that one? Yeah, yeah you already said that. Okay. I'm just, it's a pretty good set list. Did I miss anything? You missed a couple, but I'll keep some things a surprise. Uh, well, let me try to guess real quick here. No. <laughs> next, Punksy? next question. You're doing Punksy? No, okay. and I'm sad about that one. I wish okay. we were. I wish but, you, you know, this set list might change. Only lonely, um, probably. Yeah, we, we've got, like, a strong, long list that we're all going to go into. But, you know, we're practicing. We're going to be rehearsing for a good bit and there's some things that might change so yeah. don't quote me on on the nose all right well that sounds like it's going to be a good time what let me ask you this before i let you go on on uh, sure what if if that first like, god forbid that first gig you come out and there's hardcore chrissy fans and they're just I don't know what they do in Australia. You know, in England, they'll spit at people and stuff. But just say they, they were not pleasant because they're just, they, they resent it. What, you think you'll be able to handle that? I don't really like to live in what-if land. I mean, if that happens, <laughs> I'm just asking I have because, faith in my know. instinct. No, I, I understand the question. I understand what you're asking, too. I mean, it's a good question. I would ask someone that, too. Um, but to be completely honest... Um, I don't really think that's going to be, I don't think that's going to happen. And if it does happen, I just trust my instinct. I'll know what to do in the moment. Well, I'll tell you something. I saw, I saw the Divinals in New York City open for the Ramones. And everybody in the audience was a Ramones fan. And 
and and the vinyls were all over MTV at the time. So the Ramones fans thought the vinyls were some crappy new wave band or whatever, you know, some crappy MTV band, and they took beer cans and smashed them and made like those um, ninja stars out of them, mm. and were throwing them at at the, the vinyls. The Ramones fans were. I've and heard some really gnarly stories like that. Chris, so up. Chrissy used it as fuel for her performance and by the time that performance was she was she put it back in their face so hard by the time that the performance was over she had won over the Ramones crowd so I let's hope that uh, I, I mean that's what you do that's exactly then, right then I'll, then I'll take a page from Chrissy's book yes I, she used to she I'm sure you saw like she used to smear lipstick all over her face and she was something else man <laughs> God, I love that woman. Well, oh, Lauren, Lauren Ruth Ward, I wish you all the luck. In, I truly do wish you all the luck in the world. I know it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, might be tough for Mark, but I'm sure you're going to have the time of your life. And I do not blame you one bit for doing this. And I want to congratulate you for uh, the Divinals gig. Thank you. I appreciate your blessing. I hope to see well, you, you don't, on the road. You don't need my blessing, but, uh, and I'm not giving you my blessing. I'm just giving you my good thoughts. Okay, well, I'll take that. <laughs> okay, Lauren, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Okay, you too. Take okay, care. Okay, bye. There you go, Lauren Ruth Ward. I hope I answered, I hope I asked her everything that uh, I should have asked her. I tried to be nice. I think I was. All right, thanks for listening, friends. We will talk to you tomorrow. It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.